Growing up in Ibadan, Nigeria, Yevond Akinola spent her time building models of her ideal home with whatever materials she could find. But it wasn't until her mother, an artist, made a suggestion about her university studies that she considered pursuing a career in engineering over one in architecture. Also crucial in her decision was finding an engineering degree at Warwick University in the UK that focused on developing countries, using little resources and lots of creativity. The rest, as they say, is her story. Fast forward three decades, and the 36-year-old Akinola has built skyscrapers in China and researched the involvement of women engineers in the construction of London's Waterloo Bridge for the BBC. She has received the Member of the Order of the British Empire Honour from the Queen for her services to engineering innovation and to diversity in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, the fields collectively known as STEM, and she was recently appointed the UK Ambassador for Clean Growth and Infrastructure under the country's innovation agency, Innovate UK. Akinola's success story remains an exception rather than the rule in the world of engineering. In the UK, only 12% of engineers are women. In Sub-Saharan Africa, a focus of Akinola's diversity in STEM efforts as a member of the steering committee of the Royal Academy of Engineering's GCRF Africa Catalyst program, the figure is estimated to be less than 10%. With World Engineering Day, March 4, and International Women's Day, March 8, just a few days apart, this is as good a time as any to inspire women to enter the male-dominated field of engineering and make an impact on their country's progress toward the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. Engineering is a vast field with many specialities, and the choice can be overwhelming for students. For those interested in sustainability, Akinola has no doubt that the best focus is in energy engineering because it's the basis for all other sustainability activities, whether in construction or agriculture. Geography can also shape an engineer's focus. Sub-Saharan Africa, for instance, has a diversity not just of languages, landscapes and cultures but also of energy needs and opportunities. Countries like Akinola's native Nigeria, where oil has determined the fortunes of many, have yet to show a full commitment to a post-oil future. Elsewhere, the picture is different. Where there isn't that much oil, you can see solar panel farms popping up, wind turbine farms, and there's that accelerated renewable response because of a lack of a natural resource, Akinola points out. To those who doubt engineering would suit them, Akinola suggests looking beyond its reputation as a difficult, math-heavy subject. The artist's impression is what we always start off with, she says, the rest is just using maths and physics as a tool for creating that creative stroke. Another issue that deters prospective engineers is visibility, 